This is the question of uh, 2010, May, June, paper 2, 1, and the question number is 2. So it says that uh, in the 2A, it is said that complete figure 2.1 to show whether each of the following quantities listed is a vector or a scalar. So there are three quantities. One is uh, distance moved, another is speed acceleration. So distance is definitely a, a scalar quantity. So it's a scalar quantity because it requires only magnitude but does not require direction. And speed is also scalar because it is the rate of change of distance. And acceleration is a vector quantity because it is the rate of change of velocity. And uh, it is also, is also uh, uh, requires direction. Plus it is also the uh, direct byproduct of uh, uh, force. In uh, number B, uh, we have a figure, graph actually, a ball falls vertically in air from rest. So in air means that uh, there is uh, air resistance or opposing forces. The variation with time t of the distance d moved by the ball is shown as in figure. So if we look at the figure, what you can see is, uh, this is the graph of distance versus time. And here in this case, the slope of the uh, graph is constant. Here, slope is almost zero. The slope goes on increasing, but here the slope is constant. So from this person to this person, uh, slope is constant. So uh, I can infer that, I can infer that uh, in this region, the, the velocity is constant. Because uh, since slope is constant, so since we have uh, uh, slope equal to constant, slope equal to uh, constant, constant uh, and, 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 uh, v is equal to d s by d t so which is the rate of change of distance or displacement with respect to time so equal to slope this means slope of the graph so this means that this c implies that this the v equal to constant v equal to constant in this region so let me turn another page to look at the question here so by reference to figure 2.2 figure uh, this figure actually this figure how it can be deduced that the ball is initially at rest so it uh, wants us to uh, explain how we can say that the ball was initially at rest so here here the slope of the graph is zero the slope of the graph is zero and since slope of a distance time graph is equal to velocity the velocity at that time should be equal to zero so when you write the answer it should be it should be so what we can say is at uh, t equal to 0 slope of graph equal to 0 since since is slope of slope of distance distance and uh, time graph equal to speed speed the speed at that time at that time at that time time equal to zero that implies rest condition rest condition so this is the answer to this question Second question it says that uh, we have to deduce uh, we have to explain how it can be uh, deduced that air resistance is not negligible so if uh, we look at the uh, graph here if you look at the graph here we can find that the slope goes on increasing which means v goes on increasing but uh, ultimately slope is constant which means v becomes constant so if v becomes constant what we must have is we must have some sort of uh, opposing force which is becoming almost equal to the force of gravity initially it was not equal but later this opposing force is becoming uh, almost equal to the force of gravity which is making resultant force zero acceleration zero and uh, this is making the velocity constant so this factor makes us deduce that the air resistance is not negligible so when we write it what you have to say is uh, the velocity the velocity velocity increases 
increases from 0 from 0 but becomes constant constant later later indicating 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 large large resistance force resistance force force so now next is we have to use this figure this figure to determine the speed of the ball at uh, a time of 0 0.40 second after it has been released so that what we have to do is we have to find the speed after speed after speed after this uh, 0 0.40 second so this requires that we draw uh, we have to find the slope of the graph at that particular time so which means that we have to draw so i don't have scale right now ruler right now so i can use a pencil to draw so i'm using a pencil to draw this so what i can do is i can uh, pick a tangent point here so this is the tangent point and i'll draw a straight line which is tangent here so a straight line hopefully everything goes correctly i'll draw a straight line like this like this so here so from here let me uh, pick up this triangle here so if uh, this is the triangle if uh, this thing is the triangle my coordinate here will be equal to so this is 0 0.8 x-axis and in the y-axis it's equal to 1 1.5 1.6 1.65 and here it is about uh, uh, 0 0.21 0 0.21 and then it is 0 so since I have the points now we have, I have to I can find the uh, velocity here so let me place it here or let me place it here so what I can do is uh, the slope of the graph is slope slope at 0 0.40 second is equal to is equal to 1.65 so 1.65 is uh, this point 1.65 minus uh, 0 it will be first 65 minus 0 then it is uh, 0 0.8 minus 0 0.21 so 0 0.8 minus 0 0.21 so when I uh, calculate it so my calculation will go somewhat like this I'll be uh, doing this off view so I'll be doing this off view so it will give me uh, 1.65 65 divided divided uh, 0 0.8 minus 0 0.21 so this is going to be equal to 2 point so actually it is uh, 2.7966 and uh, the other figures as well so i'll write it as so i will be writing it as so let's place it here so i'm writing it as uh, 2.88 meter per second so the velocity at the point is 2.8 meter per second so it is 2.8 meter per second now on uh, no, number three what we'll do is on figure 2.2 sketch a graph to show the variation with time t of the distance d moved by the ball for negligible air resistance you are not expected to carry out any further calculation so what they say is we have to draw a graph a graph in which distance varies with time if the if the air resistance is negligible so that means this graph should be following a parabolic path so in a parabolic path what happens is uh, the slope of the graph is zero here it starts horizontally but the slope goes on increasing whether large or small the slope should be should be increasing as time passes till the last moment so that's why in the graph will be somewhat like this so from here it starts at zero at zero set so at every point at every point the slope should be increasing 
so at every point the slope should be increasing not that uh, like the in the above graph there was some constant slope somewhere so the slope is increasing increasing everywhere 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 so this should be a parabolic path if is constant or I can say if there is no resistance force.